Our message to the American public is uh, we are at war. We continue to be at war with a virus, an evolving pandemic. Our responsibility here is to always lead with the science and always lead with the advice of health and medical experts. And we're going to continue to provide information to all of you about how to protect yourself and save your lives. We're not saying that wearing a mask is convenient or people feel like it. But we are telling you that that is the way to protect yourself, protect your loved ones, and that's why uh, the CDC is issuing this guidance. We are still in the midst of a once-in-a-generation pandemic battling an ever-evolving virus. Um, we have said uh, since the beginning of June uh, that the Delta variant, a rising variant that had it uh, increasing, was clear from the beginning, had a great, a great deal of transmissibility, was a threat. Uh, to people who were unvaccinated. We did more than 100 interviews with officials conveying exactly that. And the reality is we are dealing with a much different strain of this virus than we were uh, even earlier in the spring, back in May, when the uh, masking guidance was, uh, was done, provided by the CDC at that time. That is their job. Their job is to look at evolving information, evolving data, uh, an evolving historic pandemic, and provide guidance to the American public. That's exactly what they will do and uh, what they will provide specific details on later this afternoon. Because the public health uh, leaders in our administration have made the determination based on data that that is a way to make sure they're protected, their loved ones are protected, uh, and that's an extra step given the transmissibility of the virus that people uh, that they're advising people to take. Thanks, everyone. Have a good day. Shalom. Kahlaimla. Yahweh, Bahashim, Yahweh Shah, Bahashim, Rekakadash. All praises be to the Most High, Yahweh, in the name of His Son and our Lord and Savior, Yahweh Shah. Much respect and honor to the brothers that are doing the work in truth and sincerity, risking their lives and freedom to do so, and pushing this gospel throughout the four corners of the earth. Salutations to the hopeful elect that are scattered abroad in double honors and respect to the elders and the apostles of great millstone. Coming back at you with another lesson entitled The Transgression of the Wicked. So if you look at this title, it's reminiscent of the war on drugs which targeted so-called Negro, Native American, and Latino communities. Also reminiscent of the war on terrorism, which started with the Arabs, led to the National Defense Act, which evolved into the Patriot Act being signed, which authorized intrusions on privacy cell phone privacy or invasion. And now a focus is on what? Domestic terrorism. So through gradualism, we see the erosion of rights more and more. So now we have, we are at war with the virus. So now the war on the virus. <laughs> and there's always a people behind the punchline. Have you noticed that? So anyway, let's go into the Bible. The transgression of the wicked. Let's go to the book of Psalms. Chapter 36. <coughs> Excuse me. The book of Psalms. Chapter 36. Verse 1. A psalm of David, the servant of the Lord, the transgression of the wicked, 
saith within my heart that there is no fear of God before his eyes, for he flattereth himself in his own eyes until his iniquity be found to be hateful. The words of his mouth are iniquity and deceit. He hath left off to be wise and to do good. He deviseth mischief upon his bed. He setteth himself in a way that is not good. He abhorreth not evil. So the Bible has identified who the wicked is. The Edomites, Romans, that they are devising and working mischief and iniquity upon their beds. What does that mean? Their secret, secret chambers, their secret planning quarters, working mischief and deceit. Matter of fact, let's go to Proverbs 4. Verse 16, the book of Proverbs, chapter 4, verse 16. For they sleep not, except they have done mischief, and their sleep is taken away, unless they call some to fall. For they eat the bread of wickedness and drink the wine of violence. Oh, this man is not going to stop. It's going to get worse before it gets better. And you're going to know that a prophet has been among you. Let's go to Psalms 52. A book of Psalms. Chapter 52, verse 2. Thy tongue deviseth mischief like a sharp razor, working deceitfully. Thou lovest evil more than good, and lying rather than to speak righteousness. So these Edomites were created to be the wicked, pursuant to Malachi 1, verse 4, and Proverbs 16 and 4. They were made to do evil, mischief, to be deceitful. They were blessed with deception or subtility and the sword. Let's read it again. A book of Psalms, chapter 52, verse 2. Thy tongue deviseth mischief like a sharp razor, working deceitfully. Thou lovest evil more than good, and lying rather than to speak righteousness. Thou lovest all devouring words, O thou deceitful tongue, God shall likewise destroy thee forever. He shall take thee away and pluck thee out of thy dwelling place and root thee out of the land of the living. So the Edomites are going to be defeated and annihilated, not decimated, Annihilated. Decimated means, well, eventually they'll be decimated because a remnant is going to go into slavery. And then after a thousand years of slavery, they're going to be annihilated. Let's go to uh, Psalms 36. <clears throat> A book of Psalms, a book of Psalms, chapter 36. 
Verse 3. The words of his mouth are iniquity and deceit. He hath left off to be wise and to do good. He deviseth mischief upon his bed. He setteth himself in a way that is not good. He abhorreth not evil. So this man will not stop unless he is stopped by spiritual intervention. Yahweh Shai. Why you think we're seeing multiple chariot sightings per day? They used to be about a few per year or maybe once or twice a year. Now, multiple sightings per day. Even fleets have been spotted. So we are here. We are here. Playtime and games is over. In case you didn't get the memo or the email. Let's go to Psalms 36, verse 11. See, let, let not the foot of pride come against me and let not the hand of the wicked remove me. There are the workers of iniquity fallen. They are cast down and shall not be able to rise. Well, the Edomites are going to be defeated by our Lord and Savior, our King of Kings, Yahweh Shai Hamashiach. Let's go to Psalms, Psalms 27. A book of Psalms, chapter 27, verse Let's go to verse 1. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? When the wicked, even my enemies and my foes, came upon me to eat my flesh, they stumbled and fell. Though a host, though a host should encamp against me, my heart shall not fear. Though war should rise against me, in this will I be confident. Though what? Look at the title of this video again. We are at war. The USA says we are at war. Well, there is a people behind the narrative. The Israelites, particularly the remnant or the elect. Let's go back to that. So this title, USA, we are at war with virus. Go back to Psalms 27, verse 3. Though a host should encamp against me, my heart shall not fear. Though war should rise against me, in this will I be confident. So the Most High is going to save his elect, a remnant. Let's go to verse 4. One thing have I desired of the Lord that will I seek after that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life to behold the beauty of the Lord and to inquire in his temple. Verse 5, For in the time of trouble he shall hide me in his pavilion in the secret of his tabernacle shall he hide me. He shall set me upon a rock. What rock? A fathership that Yahweh Shai is coming back on. There he's going to crown the elect men. 
or six. See? So the elect are going to be taken up into the chariots of the Lord. The so-called UFOs. Psalms 27. What is that trouble? Jacob's trouble. Let's read it again. For in the time of trouble, he shall hide me in his pavilion in the secret of his tabernacle shall he hide me. He shall set me up upon a rock. And now shall my head be lifted up above my enemies round about me. Therefore will I offer in his tabernacle sacrifices of joy. I will sing, yea, I will sing praises unto the Lord. So those ships are here. And I know it sounds like a sci-fi movie or a scene out of the movie War of the Worlds. But it's reality. And sometimes fact is stranger than fiction. So we are here entering into Jacob's trouble a time of great tribulation, a transgression of the wicked. Hopefully this lesson has been edifying. All praises to Yahweh B'Hashem, Yahweh Shai, B'Hashem, Rekah Kadash, Rekatham. We got next, Lord willing, Shalom.